Tiffany & Co is an American luxury, jewellery and specialty retailer. Today, Tiffany has more than 300 stores worldwide that employ over 12,000 people. Some of the key dates in the history of the brand include the founding of the company in 1837 by Charles Lewis Tiffany and John B. Young, the purchase of gemstones in 1848 from Europe to be sold in the US, the creation of the Tiffany diamond in 1878, one of the world's finest gemstones, which now attracts more than 300 visitors each day, the opening of the Tiffany flagship store in 1940, and the cinematic debut of the company in 1961 in the iconic Breakfast at Tiffany's. All of these historic moments have combined to create the rich history that is behind Tiffany & Co and have become a key reason for consumers to purchase their products. Another reason why the brand is so popular comes from the distinctive Tiffany Blue, which has been with the brand from the start. It is regarded as one of the most recognisable and beautiful packages in the world. This case study of Tiffany showcases the current struggles of the brand, with particular reference to the changes in key personnel at the top end of the company, especially the appointment of Frederick Kumanau as CEO and the impacts his decisions have made on the company. Tiffany's main marketing share problems are its slow market share coverages. The reason for being so will be explained in the next few slices indicating the main problems that lead to its low market share coverage. One of the main factors is that it's failing to capturing its maturing customers. Customers that used to wear Tiffany in around their 20s are now shifting towards other brands as they age, seeing other brands more sophisticated than Tiffany. To reinforce the previous point, Tiffany products line are falling out of trend as their customers report that their design is still the same as it was in the 1960s. By hanging on to the past, they also lack an innovation towards digitalization, yet to translate analog experience to digital experiences. Millennials is the main target group for Tiffany, however, there are some problems. Millennials are saving more and spending less, and now millennials are valuing experience more than materialistic items. And sometimes, diamonds are related to ethical issues for young people as well, seeing diamond mining are profiting off labourers who face dangerous working conditions and considered threat to environment. Furthermore, Tiffany's hardware product line are too expensive for higher earning not rich yet millennials women, their main target group. Tiffany also faces competitions such as Pandora, they have a clever business model selling charm for bracelets. Customers report that their designs have an upscale look and good pricing, have var variety in product lines and are trendy, which is opposite to Tiffany's product line. People keep buying charms for collection and update new charms next season. They also create a community of Pandora lovers who have maintained their brand relevance in the market. Pandora is capturing the younger customer much, much better than Tiffany. Tiffany is playing catch up in watches sales, which account for only 1% of the sales in the past two years. Other luxury brands can get as much as half of their revenue from the category. According to Brian Tunick, an analyst with RBC Capital Markets, Tiffany jewelry sales is behind its competitors such as Rolex for its watch department. As seen in the picture, Rolex have also digitalized their experience to integrate their business platform, reaching more customers online, whereas Tiffany is still struggling to do so. In order for Tiffany & Co to develop, implementing an effective market strategy concept would aid in the progression for the company. Applying a corporate and business unit situational analysis will provide all the information needed that will improve the business. Assessing the internal environment, the current performance issues being that the product is very outdated and lacks innovation. They still use old products which are now out of fashion. They have an unknown target market as they're losing their targeted mature demographic and failing to charm the millennials. In terms of the customer environment, identifying a specific target market so they can create marketing techniques to promote their product more effectively, creating lines of product that cater to their already matured demographic, but also the lesser spending millennials, creating a data source such as surveys, focus groups or studies to uncover the latest trends in the market and what satisfaction customers are looking for in the product range. Looking towards the external influences, a pestle analysis is suitable to identify all external issues. With issues around the diamond mining business being a threat to the environment because of its ethical issues, as it's seen as a profiting business of labourers who face dangerous working conditions. Facing economical issues, during the current pandemic, wages and jobs have decreased, which therefore spending on luxury goods will also decrease. 
Technological innovations during COVID-19 will mean being able to provide the same, if not a better experience through an online platform, as well as contacting customers regularly to maintain connection and try to minimize any customer loss. An ability to innovate and a dominant digital media presence are key in a company's ability to thrive against this competition. These key issues have uniquely impacted the focal firm that is Tiffany & Co as they have struggled to implement these concepts over time, causing their sales and profits to fall for two years in a row. A failure to innovate has consequently led to Tiffany losing its cool and struggling to get it back. Throughout their lifespan, Tiffany & Co have focused on exclusivity and keeping its products high-end. However, they continue to utilize their old methods of a one-size-fits-all type of approach, whilst competitors are moving forward and innovating. It is claimed that Tiffany & Co are still selling product lines that were introduced in the 1960s. This shows that they are making minimal changes to their product lines and not keeping up with the latest styles that are in demand. Whereas competitors such as Pandora are constantly releasing new products that deliver style and showcase the latest fashion trends. Tiffany & Co also lack skill and digital experience. Competitors are utilizing newer and smarter strategies to attract a younger audience as it is the biggest market whereas Tiffany & Co are still focusing on attracting an older and more mature audience. A focus in the future for Tiffany & Co to target a younger audience would mean having to either introduce cheaper products or lowering their current prices in order to gain a wider and stronger audience. Often described as digital natives who spend their time on their smartphones, which subsequently dictates how they shop, which is online. The rise of online shopping has also exposed these tech-savvy shoppers to a broader array of smaller brands and conditioned them to wait for deals. This has resulted in them being increasingly unmoved by brand names and are instead seeking more bang for their buck. As such, Tiffany's old world luxury charm simply isn't working anymore, being instead regarded as for the older generation and a different era. Tiffany should be less guarded about its brand and embrace e-commerce to a greater extent, just like the competitors who have appealed to a different mass market segment. Moreover, with changing times come changing values. This is never the more evident with the change in societal perception towards the diamond trade, with new light being shed on the negative effects left behind by the diamond industry in developing countries as popularised in the movie Blood Diamond. Nowadays, diamonds are seen to stand no longer for the timeless qualities of love and devotion. Instead, guilt has become an increasingly powerful deterrent, causing Tiffany to fall behind competitors who have moved towards new in innovations in other forms of jewellery. Tiffany has also been lagging in innovation. Competitors like Pandora are investing heavily in both design and manufacturing capabilities, expanding their design teams and bulking up on lean manufacturing capabilities. This has resulted in reduced lead times, allowing for more products to be made quicker and to drop more new lines throughout their year rather than just once a year. While Tiffany still attempts to hold its pre prestigious title by maintaining the highest quality goods, competitors are leaving Tiffany behind as they invest in bringing more to the customer in terms of value as well as qu quantity. There are various solutions that could address the issues currently being faced by Tiffany & Co. Solution one is creating new, modern icons by carefully selecting brand ambassadors that embody the brand's contemporary image. This will allow the brand to evolve by creating a new era of effortless luxury while still maintaining its traditional roots. However, traditional customers may feel as though the brand no longer aligns with them and risk losing return customers and word of mouth business from those who shop at Tiffany & Co for a particular experience. Solution two is utilizing social media marketing more effectively. This will facilitate two-way conversations with customers unlike other luxury brands and encouraging them to share or tag their Tiffany pieces will increase word of mouth conversations and strengthen brand awareness, which ultimately will guide the path to purchase. However, the risk of too much exposure may take away from the effortless and luxurious feel of the brand and many customers who enjoy its exclusivity may no longer be interested. Option three is introducing newer entry-level jewelry ranges. This will effectively target the gift giver and receiver market in the younger demographic who may only shop at Tiffany & Co for special gifts and occasions. This will facilitate a more memorable experience for younger customers who are able to walk away with their first Tiffany blue box. However, this will be costly and time consuming in order to cater to specific customers. Overall, solution three is the recommended solution as it will make them more competitive against brands such as Pandora. Thus, they will be better able to cater to this demographic through more affordable pieces while still maintaining their luxury feel.